Welcome to TLC for the Soul podcast, where soul meets spirit. You have entered into sacred space. I'm your host, Tammy Lynn Chambers, and I'm here to help you shine. Now let's get going on this podcast journey. Hello friends, hello, and welcome to the show. This is Sunday, February 18th, as we're just moving right along and motoring right ahead, right through the month of February. Um, And it is a beautiful, gorgeous day here in the whatever, where we're at, the upper northern plains of North Dakota. It's actually the weather took a big shift yesterday, so I feel like um, it's definitely feeling like um, an early spring weather, you know, Groundhog Day predicted otherwise or not. I got mixed mixed accounts on whether he saw his shadow, Puxatawney Phil saw his shadow or not. Some places it said he did and some said he didn't. And so I was like, I'm just going with my intuition and um, it's proving to be correct because all the snow and ice is pretty much gone. There's like tiny patches of ice here and there in the shady parts, but we've got 40 and 50 degree temps um, forecasted for the next couple of weeks. Um, So we had some nice humongous winds blow in yesterday. Um, I posted something on my Instagram and my TikTok. We had a huge sun dog and we had 40, three mile per hour wind gusts, but it was blowing in like a Santa Ana wind blows into California, which brings like really warm weather coming from the east out to the west coast, which is, oh, you know me in California. But um, up here, the wind was coming from the west this way to the east and bringing warmer air. Um, And so I know everyone up here is most appreciative of that. And, And when I hear people talking, it's like they can't, they really can't believe um, what's happening with the weather right now. So it seems very uncharacteristic. And I think that's happening across the upper part of the globe right now because I'm hearing people in Ireland say it's early spring. Spring is springing out. <laughs> Daffodils or whatever come up over there, coming out. So um, yay, I guess. <laughs> you know, <laughs> However you perceive that. Maybe some of you like a longer winter. But um, I can feel the stirrings of spring coming out, coming out of hibernation. And so that brings up some very interesting things we want to chat about today as I wrap us all in love light and light love and invite in the guides who overlight this show, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, the Pleiadians. Let's take a couple deep breaths together. This is... um. It's really kind of a hard week for me. It was. It, I, I have to say, it's a hard week for me to get a beat on um, in terms of the energies. I feel like I'm getting messages for maybe a couple people in particular that are very strongly a part of this community. Your energy has been a little... Um, no, of over, over it's not overpowering but your energy has kind of been like hmm, I don't know very close to, very close to TLC for the soul lately and so sometimes I feel a lot you know from energies that are very closely guy guarding watching TLC for the soul so we've got messages for those of you if you feel like that that's for you um, and we've got mess- we've got really got messages for everybody. This is an interesting week. We're coming off the end of this um, February second to February twenty second. Um, very um, intense Stargate opening that cre- is creating this huge manifestation window. And I'm sure you have to have felt this energy ramping up. Things you wanted starting to come in. Um, it, this happens every year. 
Um, it may be little things, like maybe you're just so, it's so easy for you to manifest little things. It may be some bigger things, but some bigger things not yet, but feel like maybe the bigger things, maybe you feel like you're getting closer to manifesting the bigger things. And we have some little quotes um, to read you that came up as in preparation for um, the show today, because I was like, what is this energy for this week ahead? Um, there's also a Virgo um, a full moon coming up and um, that's supposed to be, you know, task master, like masker, task master, like keeping you in charge, you know, keeping you going on your goals and your wishes and your dreams. So the energy is very fruitful this week to keep going, the momentum, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, however, at the same time, I do feel there's like this, um, I feel like there's this, what is it called? Like kind of like a waking up from hibernation kind of a feeling. Many, many people have had um, major ascension symptoms in January and carrying into this month. Um, and it may feel like your body is like coming out of a cocoon. The physical body has been very affected by what's going on with the energies here. Um, and I'm feeling it myself too, all on my right side, which for me would be like my divine masculine side. I mean, like all the upper chakras um, opening up and aligning to higher energies and greater depths of love. Um, there's also some turmoil -y, is that I'm making words up, turmoil -y things and potentials that could be happening on the planet right now. And so all of my bringers of the light, yeah, this is a big call to action, to get grounded, to go to ground, to um, get on the ground and be doing ground work um, to, yes, I'm getting big chills there, to help, um, help the planet stay aligned. So, um, the Middle East has been coming up again. Oh, I'm getting so many chills there. Um, I've heard um, someone talk about the, uh, I don't know exactly, the Temple of Solomon or something, somewhere in that area, wherever that was, and the Ark of the Covenant. And um, yeah, so many chills. Oh, God, not my whole body. Um, a lot of um, potential unrest energies coming up to be um, cleared. Um, I was asked by the guides to work with um, sending energy in my meditations to the Middle East um, for the next, well, that's, yeah, big, oh, so many chills for the next seven days, which started, um, it will end for me. I've been doing it for a couple, two or three days now, so it'll end for me on the 21st, right before the 22nd. So all of my bringers of the light that are gatekeepers, grid keepers, oh my God, dragon warriors, um, you are being asked to step up, take action if you are guided to, to do what you can to help raise the vibration in, oh my God, that it, it, my whole body. And whatever area feels right to you, it's not everybody's focused on the same places. So trust your guidance, trust your intuition on what areas you're being asked to help raise the frequency on. It could be your own, um, your own land space where you're at. Um, it could be your power spots that need extra amping up, or it could be special places that you don't normally work with that you're being guided to help, um, help to raise up a little bit. So, um, all my Knights Templar, um, you know, who past life Knights Templar, all of my Knights, all of my dragon. I mean, where it sounds like it's a big call to action from the non-physical world of the non-physical realms or kingdoms to help buoy the energy from a physical earth perspective. Yeah, because earth dragons were coming up. Um, mm -hmm. So there's that this week. It's, it's going to be a very interesting week to stay aligned and to stay on top of some different like pivoting priorities um, and trying to work these things into your routine. Um, cause it's like, okay, I've got my, <laughs> I've got my work work. I've got my, my self work, you know, whatever that I'm saying, I'm thinking of it as you guys, like you've got your work work, you've got your work on yourself that you do. Now you're being called into, I'll bring us to the light call to 
action um, to, to, to really um, do what you can. You've got things you're trying to manifest. You've got, um, you've got stuff going on. And um, as with any full moon, at the same time, we've got this 222 right in the middle of the, right in the middle of the week. And then you're being asked to, and then the full moon right after that, um, just, oh, we have so many shows, the Virgo full moon, like further amplifying the, you know, are you, are you there yet? Are you getting it done? Um, get all your ducks in a row, <laughs> spring cleaning. It's time to manifest. It's time to manifest is coming, you know, time to manifest. It's coming, right? Coming out of spring into, or coming not out of spring, but coming out of winter into spring in the Southern hemisphere. For those of you that are listening, like this is your last push. The llamas to Samhain timeframe is kind of the final harvest, the last push to get things done before you go into the early winter season. And so I think many of you are feeling it. I think you're feeling the push. I think you're feeling the, um, Mm, I think you're feeling, they're saying they're feeling, you're feeling the attention. You're feeling like eyes are on you to accomplish certain things. And maybe it's your own eyes on your own self. Because I think um, the messages for those of you that have been a little bit focused on, um, on TLC for the soul, for the work that we do, um, you know, you're trying to make your wishes come true. You've really been focused on some stuff. And you really had time to hibernate and think through a bunch of things. And now the guides are saying, this is where the rubber meets the road, friends. Um, so we have a couple of quotes um, that we want to read that came up during the week um, that I took screenshots of. One is from Lee Harris Energy. He's on YouTube. I don't know if he's anywhere else. Um, but this one really stood out to me. So we are going to read from the Rose of San Juan Capistrano here, but they've just had me jump right in with some of these things that are at the forefront um, that, yeah, that were really um, should be top, top, <laughs> should be top, top, top of the priorities right now is to, I think, work with the mental body to quell some of the anxiety you may be feeling some of the fear of failure you might be feeling, some of the, um, mm, this ready, set, go energy where you're like, wait, no, I'm, I'm still not ready yet. This like out of the gate energy that might be trying to push you when you still feel like you've got more stuff to do. So let's listen to these couple of little quotes and then we'll see the bringers of the light is still very lighthearted. Last week we had, are you a man or are you a Muppet um, come up and today's chapters are, are you a man or a bear? So that's still hanging around a little bit. Kind of like, are you, I get so much from that. Are you a man or are you a Muppet? It's like, are you going to man up, you know, man up like non-gender specific right but are you going to get your act together and get going what is going on here so the first quote is lee harris energy it says for the people who are in a holding pattern so if you feel like you've been in a holding pattern um you feel like there's areas of your life where you've been wanting to manifest something and you feel like it's just not moving forward for whatever reason um, spirit, you feel like maybe spirit source, the universe, the guides have been holding you back for some special, you, and you may think that there's something wrong. This is what, um, the spirit guides, um, I think it is the ones that he talks to are called disease or something. It says for the people who are in a holding pattern, there's not going to be a lot they can do. The holding pattern serves a purpose. It's a gestation period. It's being in a cocoon. You're being held in place until you're ready to move to the next level. I know it can be very easy being aware or spiritually minded people or people who like to work on self growth to start to judge your speed or where you're at or whether or not you're at a certain level. And as we know, all of that's just a program. All of that's just a mental pattern that we all need to continue to let go of. So if you think you're in a holding pattern right now, the fastest way to get through it will be to accept the holding pattern 
and find your way to be most comfortable and effective from within it, rather than fighting it or thinking something's wrong. So this could come up for the people that are maybe waiting for other people to do something like these. This could come up for the things that are outside of your control. Maybe you're waiting on somebody else to do something. Maybe you're waiting on another person to step forward and give you something or advice or offer you something or communication from someone or something. And you're the one that feels like you're in the holding pattern. Like, why has this new journey? Why isn't this door opened up? I know, like, right, I've been getting all these messages and synchronicities and signs that this thing is supposed to happen. And why am I still holding? Why am I still waiting? Why, 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 why? And so for you, it's kind of like, well, if it's, if it's a situation that's outside of your control, then just like this quote says, there's just going to give me a lot you can do. And the fastest way is just to accept that for whatever reason, the universe, your guides have you in this holding pattern. And the way to just get through it is to get out of the mental body. Don't fight it. You're going to have to move into deeper levels of acceptance. And most of all, not thinking that something is wrong because that can um, come up very quickly when you may feel like, because it's out of your control, and so we're used to manifesting what we want. Didn't we just say that this, this gate of 222 to 222 is this huge manifesting window? And so you're used to like, yeah, everything I want is coming in and I'm, and I'm, and I'm taking action and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But oh, wah, wah, there's these things that I can't take action on because I've been told that I'm supposed to be the receptive person here in this situation or this manifestation. I'm told that I'm the one that waits for the other thing to come to me, whatever that thing is. And so for you, you may feel like you're the one in this holding pattern and um, you're just going to have to take control of your thoughts and have faith and stay focused on the outcome that you truly desire. And that came from the Archangel Michael um, Oracle deck. Your thoughts are creating your reality, so take control of them. Now, on the flip side, for you people that are the people that are supposed to be the ones taking action towards your dreams. Maybe it is towards another person. Maybe it's, and it could be another person in any sense of the word, right? A, a romantic interest, a, a partnership, a friendship, you know, a family member, a soulmate, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you are the ones that know you're supposed to be moving forward, but you're not really, still not really feeling like you're ready, like you're ready to be ready. Am I ready? You're questioning like, am I ready to move forward? Is it time for this timeline to actually kick off? Maybe maybe the universe is hold, got me in a holding pattern for a reason. Um, they're saying, and all of that could be true. Maybe it is you need more gestation time, but some words of wisdom here is that maybe you're not trusting your guidance, trusting that you and this other person, whoever they are, um, are supposed to be moving forward together because of things from your past. Maybe there's still some things that need to be cleared. And the advice there for you is you don't have to trust other people. You only have to trust yourself, your intuition, your discernment. Your judgment will always protect you. It will tell you who deserves your trust. You just have to learn to follow your heart. Your mind is what plays tricks on you when it sees what it wants to see. So there's that. Trust yourself. Trust. I think trust. Yeah, trust yourself. You've done so much work on yourself that you need to trust that you're getting the right guidance and, and just take action if you're guided to take action. We've said on so many different occasions here that it's time to move, it's time to take action, it's time to take action, it's time to take action. And I feel like for those people that feel like they've been hearing it's time to take action and you're still not taking action, the message is, <laughs> It's time to take action. This is where the rubber meets the road. It's time to move forward. There's really no more. Well, the, the work you can do is to clear the fears and the insecurity 
and the ego mind that's telling you that um, whatever it is that you want to go for is going to be like every old other thing that disappointed you in the past. Um, you've got to bring yourself up out of that vibration because it's not serving you. You've got to work with the violet flame and clear and disintegrate those thought forms as they come up right away. Not this waiting, like oh, I'll wait till my meditation, like right away as you're thinking that thought, that thought form, the reason you're thinking it is that thought form has been, um, what's the lack of a better word? It's, it's been triggered in a sense. Something has triggered that thought form to come up. As soon as it comes up like that, that means it's out of your deep, it's out from deep within you and it can almost be seen around you or in front of you like a gray cloud. That is the prime time to use your violet flame hands or use the violet flame or ask your guides or however you do your clearing work, the electric violet light to disintegrate and cut the cords of that thought form immediately right away. Don't wait. That's going to help break through some of these things that are holding you back. Okay, I think I've got a little card to draw here from our Sacred Sights deck from Cheryl. It's not Sacred Sight, it's through the eyes of the soul. And then we're gonna read, we're gonna bring some levity into this because this just feels like a whole lot of like deep stuff, right? For this week ahead. It's like, wow. Rubber meets the road and get going and take charge. Um, okay, so the card we got is card number 11. I've got, I'm actually in pulling the cards this morning um, and I, I didn't really bring it up, but I have a whole t bunch of um, twin flame references and, and synchronicities in the cards for twin flames um, that I do want to mention. If you are a twin flame, if you're on the twin flame journey, if you're looking for your twin flame or trying to manifest your person, all of these things are like doubly, um, doubly for you. They're doubly meant for you, like exclamation mark, ex <laughs> accentuated for twin flames this week. The 1111 card came out, my twin flame dolphins card came out of the um, Song of Lemuria deck. And let's see what we've got here. And this Rosalind Chapel has been following me around. The Knights Templar, the Rosalind Chapel, the Essenes. And this card that's coming out is card number 38, which is also an 11. Um, so the other bit for us here for this week is um, a deep secret will come to light. So it's a um, female Templar on the steps of Rosalind Chapel, and it's called Rosalind Remembrance. Take special care in how much you reveal and the way it is brought out into the open. Consider the impact the knowledge will have on others and what they may do with the information. Women were key fig figures throughout the history of Rosalind Chapel. There were female Templars, sometimes called Daughters of Sion or Templar nuns, who shared the secrets of the Templars and their rites. In this painting, a lady Templar sits patiently over the time-worn steps leading to the vaults of Roslyn, waiting for the time when the secrets are to be revealed to the world. The small vault cavity, cavity beneath her emanates a powerful energy that can still be felt today. Sadly, the steps have now been made level with cement. Some 12 feet under the foundation is the main vault, which is sealed like an Egyptian tomb. Here in the musty darkness are the treasures brought from the Holy Land. And I do have to say that on the other side of the booklet is card 37 and it says, take action. <laughs> I'm just going to read this to you and then we're going to read from the Rose of San Juan Capistrano. Are you a man or are you a bear? The return of Satanta. Past mistakes can be corrected. Transmute your history through positive action now create a more promising future. The legendary Irish hero, Ku, I'll probably say, Ku Chulain's original name was Satanta. In self-defense, he killed Chief Chulain's favorite guard dog with a hurling ball. In recompense, Satanta offered his services as a replacement for the dog. He then became known as Ku Chulain, or Hound of Cullen. In the painting, he has come back as a more evolved hero and eco-warrior. Having made peace with a dog 
who is now his shamanic friend. He has returned to protect the ancient center of Tara, as well as other sacred sites, from needless destruction and development. So I think that's also a Bringers of the Light call to action card. So there's so much this week, man. I don't even know. You're going to have to like pick your, you're going to have to stay on top of your priorities and pick your, pick your battles and um, make sure that you are able to complete what you need to get done with all of these competing energies for your time and attention. All right. Let us go to Yeah, and I feel like there's competing priorities here too because cards are flying out, quotes are coming up everywhere, and then I forgot that they had me pull a song, the Never Surrender song from Triumph. Um, that's in a song. You might want to take a look at the lyrics of that song. So it's Never Surrender. I'm out in the streets, inspiration comes hard. So there's that one. So I'm going to let you, if you feel called to see what's going on there with Never Surrender, you can look up the lyrics to Never Surrender from Triumph. Oh, yeah, yeah. Never surrender. It's easier said than done, but you go to finish what's already begun. Never. Oh, yeah, this was a good one. So for those of you that are waiting around to get something done that you need to get done, never surrender. It's easier said than done. But you go to finish what's already begun. Never, that's forever, seems like such a long time. But I only got one life to live and it's going to be mine. Never surrender, we cannot be denied. Never surrender, spread your wings and fly. Ah, Gila Marjandra. All right, so let's get rid of never surrender, that. And let's just bring some fun. Um into the mix here. So last time we talked, we read from the um, chapter where they were out of grilled cheese and we had, are you a man? Are you a Muppet? And we had bear servers at the Hidden Foot Tavern and Rosalie and Calvin got past the fairy maiden that was trying to like pull them into the fairy realms and keep them from getting to their destination. And they got to the Hidden Foot Tavern. They were looking for a good old grilled cheese and honey sandwich. And that particular sandwich was out for whatever. I don't know how it could have, could have been out right. I think that I think there's some messages in there too about dealing with disappointment. Because it's like, how is, how is that one out when there, all these bears are around? The raw honey was out. And um, they they picked some alternatives, which, which they, they liked pretty well. But the, the big thing that was happening there too was the... The commotion that went up because of this cream of mountain mushroom soup that Mr. S, our little evil dastardly sprite, had made to, um, you know, pull people's energy down and, and bring people into lower vibrations. And he made that and it was meant for the, um, for the uh, Whistling Gulch Retreats Kitchen, but somehow cream of mountain mushroom show, showed up at the Hidden Foot Tavern. And so we were guessing like, um, we were, we were kind of wondering, like, is there some double agent around? Like, why did the soup get over there? And it's causing all sorts of, it was causing commotion, people that decided. So Rosalie and Calvin, their intuition was like, don't eat that soup. And they didn't, they ordered something else, but other people were ordering it and having, you know, like fights and disagreements and smashed China bowls. And so we kind of pick up there with chapter 12, are you a man or a bear? Well, said Calvin, eyeing the bare servers and the mess of cream of mountain mushroom soup puddles around the cabin. Bears growled and China was swept, and the bare server, who'd been helping Calvin and Rosalie, shoot out the last patron and placed a closed sign on the door. Rosalie finished her tea as the server placed the check on the table. Again, she noticed a very furry paw scoop up her soup bowl and teacup and saucer. She wanted to be polite, but she just couldn't help herself any longer. Excuse me, Rosalie placed her hand on the bear server's paw. I have somewhat of a personal question. The bear server looked at her with keen eyes, and Rosalie noticed the intense stare and furry countenance around <laughs> I can't read this. and furry countenance around the mouth. She cleared her throat. <clears> throat> Are you a person? 
or a bear. She said with a slight smile. The server released its paw slash hand and moved out of the light and into the shadows of the tea room area. Another server appeared holding the credit card machine. <laughs> I didn't mean to upset anyone, she said. Sorry if she'd made the server uncomfortable. Uh, let's just pay and we'll be on our way, Calvin said, holding out his card and tapping it on the machine. Cling, cling, the machine chimed in approval and the bear server handed Calvin a bag of something. Thank you, Calvin said, handing the bag to Rosalie. Any idea why everyone's so upset? Calvin asked the server. The bear slash man just grunted slightly and pointed at the bag. He stood very near the couple and was pointing towards the door. Ah, yes, you've closed, Calvin said, helping Rosalie to her feet. We'll be out of your way then. The couple thanked the server at the door for a delicious meal and headed outside into the warmth of the afternoon. What's in the bag, he said, as Rosalie opened the top and peered inside. She pulled out a note and a ramekin. The note, very keenly scrolled onto a napkin, said, Something is very, very wrong here in Whistling Gulch. Oh, I even said Whistling, Whistling Gulch. Whistling Gulch! We've been infiltrated, too. Can't talk here, but this should give you a head start. Meet me in the forbidden zone of the woods tonight after dark. Come disguised. Your every move is being watched. Rosalie handed the note to Calvin and looked at the ramekin, scrolled on a little sticker and taped to the bowl. It said, cream of mountain mushroom soup. Never eat this, along with a very sketchy drawing of a skull and crossbones. Well, this is quite interesting, they both said almost at the same time. So there you go. <laughs> Maybe this is our double agent or whatever that wants to meet them in the woods. So it feels very mysterious, right? Very sketchy according to the... I just feel the energy this week is, is like that. Like kind of like what's going on here? What is happening? Um, that it may be hard to get a beat or a line on. A beat or a line on. Beat or a line on. A beat or a line on. I feel like there's light language that wants to come through too. So we're going to do a little bit of light language. But it may be hard to get a beat or a line on. A beat or a line on. What's going on here? Um, and you're being asked to take the higher road. The higher vibe choice. Um, make. 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 Create. When you get nervous, focus on service. That advice always goes back to when you get nervous, focus on service. And for those of you that feel like you're stuck in a rut, um, let's just bring through a little healing. Maybe some of the things we've talked about have brought up those thought clouds that I'm talking about. And it would be, is it amiss or remiss? Or it wouldn't be right of me as a healer to let you just walk away with all those clouds sitting there. Especially if you feel like, I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know how to get rid of these things. We're going to get rid of some of those the things that have come up right now. Right now without further delay so that you can move into your week with some good old ass prana. So if you've never heard light language before, if it feels disconcerting to you, then maybe you don't want to listen to this. But heck, you've made it this freaking far. You might as well. I'm trying to amp the energy. But you might as well give it a shot. What can it hurt, right? You're not. You trust yourself. Trust that you've been guided here for a reason. Trust that everything that's happening is for your highest and greatest good. Trust. Trust in the magic. So what this is going to do is it's going to blast away any of those thought forms that are keeping you from reaching your intended goal. And it's going to bring in some lighter, more high vibe, um, manifesting, magical manifesting energy of the dragons. This is the year of the dragon. We feel like me a dragon mother doesn't work with more dragons this year. Come on. All right. So here we go. Let's see, I'm just take a deep breath. Your job for this is just to allow what needs to be blasted away, to be cleared away out of your energy field and for new high vibe, magical, mystical, multi-dimensional, 
fun, inner child fun, child's play energy to come in and get you out of your human adult thoughts and get you into like more of like play time. And you know, when you're a kid, why did you have to think about all that? Okay, so for those of you that said she hasn't been doing any light language in a while, here we go. It's like so fun. Okay, so there was a couple of, for those of you that like to know what they are, so there was a lot of dragon light language in there. There was that bird. I've never channeled that bird before. That big bird, there's a, that shoebill stork thing. That big one that looks prehistoric. Oh, hold on a second. Is it shoebill crane or something? Shoebill stork. That guy. Yes, the shoebill stork. That was in there. Oh, he's so crazy. And Pleiadian light language at the end because they're always about joy and childlike fun and magic and having fun. And we've got to shake away some of these doldrums. Um, for those of you that are looking for a physical activity um, and some suggestions for some things that you can bring into your 3D world to help lighten up the energy because we gave you some suggestions last week. Um, One Love by Bob, um, it's the Bob Marley. Uh, um, is it a documentary? A bi bi uh, not a bio, like a biography movie. That one looks to be pretty high vibe. Um, yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> and for those of you that like to move your body, you're being guided to take a look maybe at some forms of exercise that you haven't been necessarily looking at, making sure that your exercise routine is balanced. Okay. So, cause you can kind of get in a rut and think like, well, I'm doing my yoga or I'm doing my yin yoga. And that's all you do is like yin yoga, and yin yoga, and yin yoga. And it's like, okay, that is not balanced. We've got to get some strength training in there some cardio and the flexibility training. So look at maybe picking up something new and fresh and different. Uh, maybe some Tai Chi or some Qigong is really helpful in balancing out your energy fields. Maybe learning some of those forms like the dragon or the monkey or the crane. Maybe just, you know, take, take a look at some beginners, little video or something and trying some of those, trying some breath work and meditation, you know, keeping it well rounded and well balanced um, because where you may think you're physically fit in one area, like maybe your cardio is really, really good, but maybe your core strength needs some work. Maybe your balance and flexibility needs some work. So look to branch out into some other areas for your um, physical body that will really help you be balanced. And I'm actually doing that. Oh, that's Okay, bird poses and stuff right now. I'm up doing like yoga moves and Tai Chi moves as I'm talking. Loving my wireless mic. All right, I'm gonna let you all go now. I hope you have an amazing week ahead. If you wanna join us, and go more deeply into different practices, you can head over to my Patreon in the Bringers of the Light um, tier or the Bringers of the Light Academy, the Inner Sanctum. We're gonna be starting to put in some more um, inner school mystery teachings in there as well as just um, healing and um, like, what do you most need? We're kind of, but we're a little bit focused on what is the group most need right now. But I'm also going to start adding in some more um, of my workshops and teachings in there 
Um, and that is also the only place right now where I'm offering private sessions. So if you want a private session with me, um, any type of healing work or stuff, then you need to be part of the Inner Sanctum. And that is a small group of up to 20 people. Um, so that, that's the people that I want to work the most closely with the people that are serious about doing the work, not really like one-off sessions with folks that, um, kind of just are in and out. I want the people that are in it to win it. All right, you guys, I want to thank you so, so much for joining me here and we will see you all again soon. Take care. This episode has been brought to you by Mugwort Mavens. You know who you are. All those not-so-normal people out there who just are a little bit more magical than some of our other worldly folks. Mugwort Mavens is here to support you with whatever your magical needs are, be it a sprig of mugwort, a mandrake root, or a blessed belladonna flower come to mugwort mavens for your magical needs <laughs>